Hello, everyone. It's me. It's Sia B. Welcome to the channel. I am here to talk about beauty, budget, and business. Today, I'm going to focus on the business piece, and I'm going to focus on what most people know me for, which is the notary business. So one form that I get all the time in person and in, as a Ron is a spousal consent form. And the one thing I wanted to do is I just wanted to kind of talk about what this form is and in what situations you may see this form. So first of all, uh, a spousal consent form is a legal document, okay, that says that one spouse is about to take an action that will or might affect the rights of another spouse. So let me say that um, the situation where I see the spousal consent forms most often is when someone, a participant, is going to take out a loan on their retirement account, okay? So in order to do this, often there is a spousal consent form. Now, what happens 90... Okay, let's let's not exaggerate. What happens 30% of the time when I get on Notarize, which is my preferred platform, and someone wants to get this particular form notarized, I would say 25 to 30% of the time, the wrong person's on the platform because it is the spousal consent form the person who works at the place, the person whose account it is, is not the person who should be before me. It should be their spouse because essentially it's saying their spouse consents to the fact that the person is taking out this loan. So it's interesting because that is a form that I see quite often. And if you're not really careful, if you're not paying attention, there might be instances where you notarize the form and you have the wrong person before you. And that's not good because you don't want the form to get rejected. You don't want them to have to come back. Um, but in the meantime, if you do a good job, if you notarize the form properly, they will always know you as their neighborhood notary. And if they need you, they will call on you again. So that's just a quick tip about spousal consent forms. And often in person and online, you will see that being signed when people are doing some type of financial transaction, usually taking out a loan off of a retirement account. So that's it for today, everyone. This is Sia B. Until next time, bye. Hello, 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 everyone. How are you? Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl, Sia Bryant, and I am here with a new video because, because, as you all know, I am active on the Notarize platform as an independent contractor. I don't work for them as an employee, as a W-2, so I want to make that clear from the jump. But I do take a number of calls on notarize.com. I think I'm up to 4,300 or something like that. So I've taken a lot of calls there. And I've had some people ask me about the new 1583 form. So I said, well, I am going to take the time and do a video on it and just because it is... Um, it's interesting. So let's take a look. Let me see if I can share my screen and talk to you all about this doggone form. Let's see. Hopefully I'm looking in the right place and the video shows up properly. But what I want to do is I want to talk about this form. This is the new 1583. Now, um, some of you all know that in Notarize, there are different levels. There's, I think, the partner level, then there's the business level, then you get the gold level. So the retail queue, you can take kind of retail calls. In the business queue, 
you get a lot of these 1583 forms. So recently, they changed the form. And I want to talk a little bit about kind of what's different with this new form. So one thing that's very interesting about the form is that you need two forms of ID as you did before, but one form of ID is primarily for primary identification, photo ID purposes. And that's what's indicated here in box eight. Okay, so photo ID information from applicant. And I will say the last few that I've gotten on this new form, everything has pretty much been filled out in advance. So kudos to whoever's pushing these through on Notarize because um, it, it can be a little discombobulating when you're used to a form being a certain way and now it's changed. So um, you're still looking for the two forms of ID, no matter what company is pushing these 1583 forms your way. This is the first form of ID, which is the photo ID and the primary identification source. So cool. Here you have the person's name, the ID number, who issued it, if it's California, the expiration date on the ID, wherever, and then what, and it tells you exactly what is the form of ID here. Okay. Then we have the second form of ID, which is primarily for address verification purposes. Now, here's something that's a little bit different. Um, when you talk about this for address verification purposes, they're very, very descriptive in what is allowed to be accepted on this form. Now they still they did that in the past, but then some companies would be a little bit more lenient than others. Um, but for this one, the second form of ID, the name, the person's address, okay, and the address ID type. So it has to be that like their lease, their mortgage, a uh, vehicle registration card, something of that nature that has the address that matches this here. So what if you have someone who has like a driver's license and the ID, the photo ID is here and they used it as their primary photo ID, but they had another piece of identification and it does not match the address down here, but this does. Nope, no good. This second form of ID has to match the address that's in the box. So now some people might say, well, that's been kind of sort of that way already. I postal one was already a little picky about what you were allowed to accept and not accept, but this is something that I've seen kind of come down the pike for several different vendors that that push these forms through to us. So we have those two things. Um, another thing that's interesting is this, this is a little bit different, the signature of witness. So I've also seen in the notes tab when there are uh, notes for us to kind of be aware of when we are filling out forms, it, it, kind of on this part of the screen, something will say, hey, something that's a common error is that notaries aren't signing the signature of witness portion. So that is a little bit new because on the old form, we would put um, C attached um, certificate, okay? And then we would attach a loose leaf. Now, the forms and the instructions that I've seen come through say no loose leaf, no dice. You sign as a witness, you date, and then on the second page is your notary block here, okay? So this is different. This is different. So again, you have the state, the county, um, all of this information, your signature when your commission expires and your seal and anything else that is required in your state to make it an official notarization. But what's different is that there's no attachments anymore, okay? So that's all I just wanted to kind of kind of hop on 
and talk to you all a little bit about it. I had some friends who were talking about this in a group chat. I said, well, let me go ahead and make a video about this because I've seen kind of enough come through now that I think I kind of have a good feel for what to look for kind of right off the bat. Um, so we can kind of do that in a quick fashion. So that's, I just wanted to show you the new form. Now, what's confusing and what's kind of crazy is that you'll get some new forms and some old forms. So that can be kind of hard to keep track of. And it's one reason why I kind of stay away from the business queue often. I love to stay in the <laughs> in the gold queue with doing the real estate transactions. But if nothing's happened there, I will hop into the other queues um, and pick up some some new things from the the business or the retail side. So, but that's it, folks. Let me stop sharing this. I just wanted to show you the new form. If you hadn't seen it, if you had seen it, I just wanted to kind of bring a couple of things to your attention. Um, so I want to hear from you. What do you think about this new form? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you think we got enough lead time and enough training in terms of how to handle the new form? Or is it just something else that's confusing to all of us? Um, so I'm interested to hear kind of what the response is on that new form. So that's it for me, folks. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn the notification bell on for these videos. And until next time, happy signing. Bye-bye.